our body's a chemical producing factory. And we just call them hormones. Most people just call them hormones. People get addicted to the drama or whatever that is. And it's a real addiction, you know, just like if they were addicted to cocaine or alcohol or any of those things. And I think it's even more insidious because it's done from an inside job rather than snorting or shooting or smoking or taking a pill. So people are rather even aware that they're doing it. So that's the, one of the things we're doing here. I mean, you've been playing with mm -hmm. us long enough to, to see this too. When we start telling people about their, like, you know, you have anger and resentment. Oh, no, 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 no. Not me. Not me. No, not me. <laughs> definitely not me. Maybe everyone else, but definitely not me. <laughs> now, my mom and dad, oh, my God, <laughs> those, those were resentful. Did you like that? Did you like your mom and dad? Oh, no, I hated it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <clears throat> and then, like, oh, my gosh, I've been carrying around the hate of my mom and dad for 40 years, 50 years, whatever. And they're... You know, they they had it, but I didn't. So how did you did you like that being raised that? No, I didn't like it. Well, that's hate. No, no, no. I just didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hilarious. Kind of, it's kind of like Scooby Doo, and they pulled the mask off. We're like, oh, it's yes, such it is. A, that is oh, hate. That's me. Yeah, that's wasn't me. me. <laughs>
in the mm-hmm. ship. And so it was beautiful the way you said it. it your words help you with your next step. It, it guides you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so uh, I, 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 I felt that. I, yeah. felt, I felt that. If we're, if we're worried about saying it right, that's the big deal. Or what I noticed, too, is I was able to start feeling these words from, from other people before I was able to start feeling them for myself, too. You know, when you first start doing this, maybe you start waking up to somebody, what somebody else is saying and go, ooh, that feels a little funny when they say that. Mm. You know, so yeah, I hear you about the feeling, but a lot of when people start to wake up, they start to notice it. To me, I start to notice it now outside of me first, and then I start to notice it in them, and then I start to notice it in what happened when I was doing it. Yeah. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think for for my experience, I was aware of other people's language first, maybe, and the mm-hmm. the feelings tied with it. But and I also, I chose to feel my words that's Mm -hmm. a big deal because that was that was new for me Hmm. and you know by choosing it now I'm actually I'm being on purpose in my own life instead of life being airy fairy or really um oh you know it shows up one day and not another or whatever. Like I just got on purpose about something. Mm -hmm. I was on purpose about a lot of things in, in different areas. I love fitness and and health and different things like that. And I was really on purpose about that. This, I really just took that skill set and applied it to feeling my words. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, in our coaching, sometimes we do things a little, a lot differently (laughs) than than a lot of other systems or modalities out there. And I mean, I may say a sentence or two, I may say it 10 times in a row or a hundred times in a row, if that's what it takes for me to actually feel my words. Mm -hmm. And I felt a little weird Mm -hmm. or awkward or stupid or whatever. Pick your word. Mm -hmm. I felt ashamed, embarrassed uh, of doing it so many, like saying the same thing so many times, like what? Especially, you know, some of the first times I did it was working with a coach mm-hmm. and it felt awkward. It was, it's one thing to do it, you know, for myself in front of, a, you know, qu- you know, in a mirror, just me. That's it. Doing it with other people was a little different. And then I realized that I, I can do it that way mm-hmm. and repeat it and that's okay. Or I can just get really on purpose the first time I say something. Mm-hmm. And... You know, if, if every single word that I speak is creating something, I can just simply speak or decree that I feel every word that I speak. Mm-hmm. What if it's that easy? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, had a, uh, I was living on a farm, and uh, we would go out and get eggs uh, from the chickens, and I got a whole bunch of eggs, and I went into the kitchen. And the farmer, he was hanging out with me, and we were about to make this scramble. And well, I, I'll get, you know how you grab the egg and just crack it on the side of the pan? And so I cracked it, and then it didn't open up all the way, and I cracked it, like, the second time. And the farmer, he was like, oh, you didn't mean it the first time. Hmm. Sometimes we may have to crack the egg a few times, but if you just mean it the first time, we're like, God. And so that's what I'm gathering that what you're saying is, yes, you go through the whole process of saying it over and over and over again until you feel it. But if you choose to feel it the first time, then that's where the power is, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And to me, it's always the first time. You mm-hmm. may say that same, I may say that same phrase over and over and over and over again, whatever I've said it to, and produced a feeling inside me, that's great. Now I'm going to say, it, say those words again. It'd be the first time again, mm. and, and yes, because the first time because it's you're jumping or I'm jumping into my next level yep. of whatever that is. Yep. Yeah. So when I first started hearing about language, I, in this way, you know, because mm. I shared my story of it growing up, but as I began to hear about it in this way, um, I had some dialogue in my own head or monologue. You know, well, maybe, maybe not, and it was telling myself some different stories. And so one day I was walking around my house and I was looking for my keys. Mm -hmm. And I lived in a two-story townhouse at that time. And so I'm walking up and down the stairs and I'm saying out loud to my children, hey girls, 
I, I'm looking for my keys. I can't find them. I don't know where they are. Hmm. And have you seen them? And little kids, no, no, mommy, no, 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 I, I haven't seen them. So 20, maybe 30 minutes of this is happening over and over again. I'm looking for my keys. I can't find them. I don't know where they are. So my subconscious is literal. Every, my subconscious, my body, like mm. all of creation is literal. It, it functions like a computer. Yep. It's waiting for my directions. So as I'm doing this and I get to that, whatever, 20, 30 minute mark, it was like, God thumped me on the head. And he's like, hey, remember that language thing you'd been hearing about? Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, okay, this is kind of stupid, but you know, my internal conversations. And so I was like, you know what? I did it the other way for 20 or 30 minutes. I'm just going to, let's just try this. Mm -hmm. So I got really still, really quiet, cleared those conversations out of my head. And I simply, I choose to know where my keys are. And I meant it. I was very on purpose about feeling my words. And within 30 seconds, I found my keys sitting plain as day on the bar height countertop. I mean, I just walked up and picked them up. Well. And I mean, there are a lot of explanations for, for what could happen here if you study quantum physics or spiritual stuff. I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways to play with it. And potentially one of the simplest versions is that we're literal. Right. So my brain is listening to me. So if I say I can't find them, it will actually have that, my vision cut off from seeing or experiencing, depending on how you choose to apply this, but I literally could not see my keys mm -hmm. that were sitting there plain as day. Mm -hmm. So, and, and if we play with some of the other language, I can't find them. That one's pretty straightforward. Right. The other thing I was saying is I'm looking for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So looking and finding, I mean, if, if for those of y'all listening or watching, um, just say those out loud, looking and finding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, looking, the, it's, it's a perpetual looking, especially mm -hmm. if I stay in the energy of I can't find it, I'm looking. Uh, you know, it, it's just a continuum until I give a new direction. Right. So looking just kept me in looking. Um, so I can't find them. I'm looking for them. I don't know where they are. And that one's pretty straightforward too. But like the simplicity, sometimes I was raised that certain words are interchangeable. I got news. They can be, they can, in my brain, mental concept of them can seem to be the same. Hmm. But really when I feel the words and, and make a literal picture, not some mental, um, you know, the layers of filters that I've heard the word through, but actually literal. A lot of times I come up with a very different result. So how would you, uh, for people listening, how would you say, would you say, uh, would you ask God to help you find my keys or say I choose to remember or? Yeah, I mean, some... there's, there's uh, any of those, all of those have worked for me previously, um, which, you know, we'll, we can, talk about questions next because you're mm -hmm. that was you know you, that was your first one was a question you know god you know can you help me find them mm -hmm. um but you know i for me in that moment it was simply i choose to know where my keys are okay. mm -hmm. i choose to have my keys and it literally it just opens up because my neural receptors and my neural pathways they are listening to me they are connected to my directions mm -hmm. So literally, it, it was either I was giving it, giving them directions to stay closed and stop receiving information specifically related to my keys, and I choose to know where they are, directed them to open. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. simple. The key thing, I mean, people do that. I, I remember when I was doing that, too. I'd get in my car and go, ah, oh, shit, I forgot my keys in the house again. And so my subconscious was listening to me, and every and I'd go, Oh, shit, I forgot my keys in the house again. I forgot mm. my keys in the house again. I forgot my keys in the house again. And I realized when I got my car, that was a lie. When I said that, when I got my car, actually, I remember my keys are actually in the house, you mm. know? Yeah. So when I started changing my language, as simple as that is, and go, I remember my keys are in the house. Now, I mean, like, like those instances drop down to, like, a very rarity. And if I do, if it happens again, oh, I remember my keys are in the house there or on my nightstand and oh yeah there they are you know yeah um yeah and, and well, yeah well, the languaging piece too you mentioned too, about growing up i remember my grandparents talked to me about this power of language but they also spoke to 
you know, I was raised where if you cry, you're not supposed to cry, you're not supposed to feel this, you're not supposed to feel all these, all this stuff. So I was using language empty, you know, mm-hmm. with, no, with, uh, with no feeling behind it or with suppressed feeling behind it. So what was manifesting in my life was, you know, if you couldn't say the word hate or if I cried, you will go get a belt to give you something to cry for. So all those feelings were suppressed. So no matter what I said, those suppressed feelings were was manifesting in my life until I woke up to this. And we started to you know, create that alignment between thoughts, words, and feelings. And that's where the magic occurred. And that's where the, the tears and the reshaping of our lives occurs when, where, when my word began to feel. I began to feel my word. Mm. And yeah. I even felt the difference of you saying it to me. Mm. Um, and so when you felt the words of like, uh, you felt the words of, um, I choose to find the keys or whatever the choice. I imagine you even telling your daughters that. Imagine you saying uh, to your daughters, uh, help me find my keys or assist me in finding my keys. They probably would have felt different as well. Like, okay, let's do that. So when you're able to feel your words, everyone else Mm -hmm. can feel your words and join in in the conversation of languaging or whatever it is. And so that was, I believe that's important because I felt the difference when you said that. I was like, Ooh, like, like, yeah, let's go find the keys. Like, even though we're not, we're doing a podcast, you know? So yeah, the importance of feeling your words, everyone else feels it as well. Yeah. And it, you know, another really simple place to see this in everyday life for, for a lot of people is, is with animals. Hmm. You know, when, when you're talking with the dog, I mean, I'm, I've had dogs that seemed unruly, and I've had dogs that listened. Well, I got news. It wasn't the pet. <laughs> it was me, meaning mm. my words. And even, even we have a dog now, and if I give a, a flippant direction, eh, she may listen, she may do something else, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of, eh, whatever. Mm. And when I say sit, and I mean it, you better believe her butt's on that ground. Because she knows, and kids, I mean, how, it, this is important. You know, if I, am, if I give flippant directions or, or imagine I love you. Mm. Mm. That's a real one. Mm. Mm. With kids, like, imagine saying, I, I, or, or with anyone, mm. and especially my kids. Yeah. So, you know, the, the flippant I love yous, they're, I mean, I, I choose to know if it's any better than leaving it off altogether. I, I mean, I that's, a, so. my, that's a pretty... My girlfriend, uh, she's called me on it a few few times where I kind of flippantly said it. She's like, nope, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, she'll call me on that. Yeah, And I, so people feel, especially your children, your loved ones, they know the difference when you said, I love you, and they felt it, they got mm-hmm. the goosebumps, and then when you're like, hey, I love you, you're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> No, thanks. And when you're... If you're speaking that flippantly thing, what you're doing also is you're helping your children, um, or you're producing them to have not healthy, unhealthy boundaries. Like when you say, "Hey, this is what I mean," mm-hmm. that teaches them healthy boundaries. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, I mean, how many people go through life testing boundaries, testing boundaries, testing, or, or having people encroach on your boundaries and are unhappy? But when you go, "Hey, kids, this is what I mean. Take this. This is done." And you hold those boundaries. That's teach. That's having that child recognize healthy boundaries inside themselves. Yeah. And that's super important in today's world. I mean, look what's going on. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. There. Okay. So language is really important. Mm. <laughs> no, it's just deep. I was just thinking. I was like, wow, language. You mean it's not just like you know putting words together. This is a way of life. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And and very yeah very very different than uh, what most people are raised in. Yep. I mean, because, well, for me, growing up, feeling feeling was painful. At least that was my perspective on it. Mm. There were things that were just like, what the heck are you guys doing? Yep. And why am I even, like, a- as a kid, why am I experiencing this? Mm. So for me, that was, that was what I chose. I actually chose, I remember several times, I mean, many, many people, as I coach, you know, the conversations about turning 
turning off feelings, sometimes they're really subtle and, oh, that hurt and it felt icky. So it's more of a, a withdrawal. I've had that too. I've, I'm aware of where I've done that before. And I also remember many times in my childhood and young adulthood, really until you know a handful of years ago when I found what we're doing here, I remember consciously choosing, nope, I'm just going to pretend like everything's fine. And well, that's it. And if I pretend like it's not there, then maybe it's not there. I got news that sucks. <laughs> it sucks, and and it's a lie. <laughs> Maury Povich, and that is a lie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean it. It is like mm. it's like Mark said. It, like it actually attaches that that thing that I'm suppressing or leaving off. It it attaches to me not as not as a punishment, oh, you did that wrong and you've got to suffer with that feeling. No, it's, it's for me to find out something about me mm -hmm. and about life and about my connection to God that, and, and maybe this painful thing, maybe it took it, it getting painful for me to actually wake up to it. Maybe it came in as a blessing the first time and I dismissed it. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oops, I mean, this pain, if it feels painful, it's simply to wake me up to something new. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, feeling, language seems really small and subtle, and feeling can seem really small and subtle. And yet, these foundational pieces are some of the most powerful, potent tools that I have discovered in my journey recently so i mean we we could take this whole bunch of different directions too really you right. know um i mean we talk about the physical body Ooh, let's talk about that it's suppressing your emotions can affect your body and yeah. various work you know like a stomach ache yeah you know, oh give yeah us some suppressing examples. well suppressing feelings and also the words that i speak okay you know oh it's really interesting, you know, people say things like, well, that scared me to death. Right. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Oh, let's go back to this one. I, I don't remember or I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. If I am affirming over and over again, I don't know, I can't remember, I don't know, I can't remember, that has the brain go into a perpetual state of shutdown. Mm. People can sometimes categorize that as Alzheimer's or dementia. Yeah. I, mm. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, just saying. Play, play with it. Okay. Play with it. Uh, I play with essential oils. Mm. And I do some coaching. I actually incorporate oils into my coaching because of how they work with the limbic brain. And it bypasses all the thinking of the frontal lobe. And it simply goes straight to, uh, excuse me, it, it bypasses our frontal thinking brain and go straight to our midbrain or our limbic brain where memories and emotions are created, housed, stored, access, you name it. So that's why part of the reason I love playing with oils because it can turn some things off and it can wake some things up. Mm. Yeah, a sense of smell, it goes, it goes straight through, you know, that's, and that's a blessing from our creator, right? So in case a house is burning down, we don't have to be we don't have to be awake and conscious to smell, you know. Mm -hmm. So it just goes straight, straight, straight in. So if you yeah. have a, a, a frequency or a, uh, an oil that's a particular frequency, it'll wake up something and create a memory, mm -hmm. jog a memory. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks for that. You're welcome. I just jog my I just jog my <laughs> memory through through you sharing that. I'm perfect. So so, <laughs> <laughs> so part of uh, how I got introduced to this was. Well, I love health and fitness, and then I got introduced to oils. Um, again, prior to getting into oils, I had some head chatter about y'all are a bunch of weirdo hippies, and that was that. And then finally, I, I got to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm just going to check this out just I mean, really to have my friends shut up and stop talking about them, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, and so in this class, she shared a little bit about how how emotions and language and different things it, it was more focused on emotion but she shared a, a slew of different scenarios about how feelings get trapped in the body and she got to the point where uh she was talking about liver 
the liver and anger. And a handful of months prior to me experiencing this class, someone uh, in my family had passed of poor liver health, Mm. let's call it that, and um, except they had zero of the the normal things like alcohol or, you know, none of their behaviors would have produced that according to what most people think of for, right. for liver challenges. Mm-hmm. However, this person had a very challenging life and had a lot of anger. Like as I, as I sat with it, I, I mean, it was all, all over mm-hmm. this person and how they live life and how they experience life and in the conversations that we had. And, and I was just, I was in awe. I was like, wow. And she had given the lady leading the class at the time had, had given several examples up to that point, And she gave a couple afterwards. And I kind of was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's great, whatever. And when she said that one and it was someone close to me, I was like, oh. And then within, as I gave myself permission to actually explore the truth of it, right, because my head chatter, my thoughts had no, 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 no. Those are just as powerful. So as I gave myself permission to explore it, before I left that class, maybe 30 minutes later, I had people in my life that I personally know with every single emotion and physical body connection. Mm. And I was just, wow. And that was really, that was a huge step in me learning or experiencing more holistic modalities and that was really a powerful step in me coming here even though it was maybe a, a couple years later by the time I, I segued and found what we're doing here um it, w- it, it was pivotal for mm. me um so so basically what you're saying is like these emotions uh produce can produce a certain type of chemical in your body that's equivalent to alcohol or some mm-hmm. type, but because we're running it and it's chronic, then it's overpowering or being stored somewhere in our body. Is yeah. it, it would, Mark? No, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Our body's a chemical producing factory. and We just call them hormones. Most people just call them hormones. No. Ah, gotcha. Yep. Oops. Oops. <laughs> okay. And, uh, you know, that's, people get addicted to the drama or whatever that is, and it's a real addiction, you know, just like if they were addicted to cocaine or alcohol or any of those things. And I think it's even more insidious because it's done from an inside job rather than snorting or shooting or smoking or taking a pill. So people are rather even aware that they're doing it. So that's the, one of the things we're doing here. I mean, you've been playing with mm-hmm. this long enough to, to see this too. When we start telling people about their, like, you know, you have anger and resentment. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Not me. Not no. me. No, not me. <laughs> Definitely not me. Maybe everyone else, but definitely not me. <laughs> now, my mom and dad, oh, my oh God, God. <laughs> those, those were resentful. Did you like that? Did you like your mom and dad? Oh, no, I hated it. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. <clears throat> and then, like, oh, my gosh, I've been carrying around the hate of my mom and dad for 40 years, hmm. 50 years, whatever. And, they're, and you know, my, they they, they had it, but I didn't. So how you, did you like the, being raised in that? No, I didn't like it. Well, that's hate. No, no, no. I just didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of like Scooby Doo, and they pulled the mask off. We're like, oh, it's yes, such it as a, that oh, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Well, and it's it, you know this brings up an interesting or and a powerful point for me too is it can be a little confrontational as we begin as I began finding some of these things that I was doing, some of these patterns I was holding on to, I mean, it, it can get really confrontational. Mm-hmm. It's really only connected to my own belief system. It's, it's only confrontational because that's who I think up to that point that I, or even in the beginning, you know, as it's happening, that's who I think I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's just who I think I am that has no bearing on who I actually am. Right. It's just the story. It's a, our personality is what we tell ourselves about ourselves. Mm. So those words are creative. Those thoughts are creative just as well. So I can tell myself a different story about me and produce a different result. Right. And yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's quite amazing how all these tools it's so simple Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so simple if it's confrontational awesome congratulations that means most likely well 
skip the most likely. It just means you're on the right track. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because if if there's if it's just oh yeah if if I can move through it easily, um, like and just dismiss what someone said, then then most likely then it then it's off. But the mm. the reason the trigger shows up is because it's rubbing up against a, a lie or a yeah. belief that I've been holding on to. Because you talked about. Um uh, you just said, that, you know, it's good that you're going through the because you're, you know, you're because you talk about the, the pain scale or the um, scale of emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I, I believe that because I use that frequently, like in my, in my, with myself and then in my, uh, my relationship. And because uh, some people are like, wait a minute, how is this a good thing? Like, how am I, how am I, you know, anger is a good thing. How is feeling grief or sadness? How is that a good thing? Yeah. Yep. Um, so before we get into that, okay. one other thing, spiritual law, spiritual law, quantum physics, uh, a lot of famous people have said a lot of the, the things, I mean, they, they got a lot of it from scripture. Hmm. So one of the things is the truth will set you free. So as we, you know, even if it's confrontational, if I stay, when I stay and find the truth about why I feel triggered, then, then it's over. Mm-hmm. That little, that game is over. The story is over as quickly as I choose. So that's, that's a really important piece. Powerful. Yeah. Like have that on deck, mm. have that on deck. All right. Let's talk about the scale of emotions. Okay. So, and well, the, I'm going to actually tie this back into spiritual law too, before, before I get into the scale of emotions. Um, my greatest weakness shall be my greatest strength. Your greatest weakness shall be your greatest strength. So if that's true, and so far I found it to be true every time, and I'd love to hear Mark's story because he's he's got some good ones on this, but if if that is on deck for me at all times, then I know that even if I feel anger, something really powerful is coming from it. So Anger, most people feel anger if, we talked about boundaries, most people feel anger if someone has has crossed their boundary. Right. Now, they, it may have been um, some boundary that they were completely unconscious of. Mm-hmm. A lot of times that happens until we start consciously setting boundaries for ourselves. Um, or maybe it was some some boundary that was passed down that we were taught was wrong or right or something like that. I, there are a whole bunch of different ways, but really what anger becomes, because energy is neither created or destroyed, right? Facts. But it can be transformed. Mm. Okay. So if I try to get away from my anger or push it away or, you know, suppress it, any of those other things, I'm actually displacing part of my energy package. That is part of me. No worky. Hmm. I, and it takes so much energy to separate myself from this part of my energy, it actually becomes exhausting. Hmm. So really, if I look at what it's becoming, anger sim- simply becomes authorship and authority. I can make a new conscious choice and actually author, my, excuse me, use my authority to have my boundaries state, again, just mean it. Hmm. No, this is how I operate. This, these are the kind of people that I have in my life. The, like, and it can be just, I, I can still do that from a place of, with anger connected into it, or I can do it from a place of love. So that, that's really powerful. Like if anger shows up, I, or some you know, trigger, anger, grief, fear, apathy, any of those pieces, my, my encouragement to anyone listening or watching, celebrate it. Because if my greatest weakness truly is my greatest strength, then however big this is, I get that much of the opposite returning for me. Mm. Grief becomes joy. And it's not this joy of something on the outside is going well, so I'm going to be happy now. It's different. Mm -hmm. We're made of joy. It's that, that's what's on deck for us. And ha- really having that return. So fear, what's fear become? Fear becomes faith. Faith, trust. trust. There you go. 
courage. There are a lot of different things that mm-hmm. that fear can be turned into, and it, most likely they're going to be intertwined and woven together. And it's freaking beautiful. <coughs> it's, yeah, that's powerful. And the, I'm glad you said it was beautiful because it, it just triggered. It, even though, like, some of this stuff, yes, I've, I've heard because we all w- work together, I'm hearing it new and different for the first time. Mm-hmm. And so when you said it, you know, beautiful, I'm like, oh, when, when we, remembering all of this stuff, now I see life as beautiful. You know, under having the knowledge and understanding and remembering, like, oh, okay, fear turns into courage. Okay, the boogeyman's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever that voice is, is, is gone. And just the only thing that's left is, is courage and, and love. Yeah. And so thank you for sharing that because it's, yeah. Um, even yes, this is a podcast, but I'm getting I'm getting me, something yeah, out of this. Me so too. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. you know, what we've, what we've talked about here too was so different about what we're doing. Is a lot of um, a lot of modalities have you set a goal and reach your goal, right? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's really cool. However, it, what we're doing here is we're creating a uh, having people wake up to what's different about life for them, mm-hmm. you know, capital L life, not to little squeaky, you know, I want a yellow sports car type of life. <laughs> but, you know, what's, what's changing my relationship to life? And we really choose to have our life change, change the relationship to life, then all our life changes everywhere at the same time. It's a quantum, quantum leap. Gravity right. was working way before it was defined. Mm-hmm. It simply was. Just because they had yet to define it, does that mean it didn't exist? No. Mm-hmm. Nope. So my point in bringing that up is when I, and, and I encourage you, like, vet, vet this stuff. Try it out in your own life. Experience it. Play with it. I mean, do it on your own. We're here. This is what we do. We love doing that. I speak for me. I love doing this. And I've heard I li- these. I, li- I would be here. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, but. Like, as I can trust spiritual law and quantum physics, because God made all of it, as I can trust it, like I trust gravity, Hmm. something changes for me. Like, all of a sudden, the things that were super complex and, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this? And all those conversations, they get really, really simple and quiet because I can take spiritual law and apply it to any situation or I can bring any situation to spiritual law and find something brand new about me and about life in that moment Mm -hmm. and it's I mean it's been a game changer yeah I agree like I am you know you're saying thank you for for sharing and you're hearing it a new in a new way and again if every single word that I speak is creating the more my being listens to me so I am so thankful to have the opportunity to to talk about this stuff and share it again and that's part of the reason I love coaching because the more I share it the deeper I get it mm. and it's like wow and I I find myself the more I talk about it I have more gratitude and just life is amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so are we. Like it's yeah. like it's it's refreshing and it's like it 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 takes over those other conversations. It's way more powerful than any of the other conversations that might show up about oh this day or oh my gosh, I got all this stuff to do or you know whatever. When I can move into like gratitude and awe and um i mean uh, most things really distill down very simply to those two things Mm -hmm. like everything else changes the whole all those conversations in my head shift almost immediately Mm -hmm. or immediately and it's just like rather than you know a, a lot of people are trying to stop those conversations in their head or you know oh i gotta stop thinking that or they're beating themselves up for the conversations in their head that's a right 
that's a really interesting mm-hmm. dynamic that happens because it it actually perpetuates it perpetuates it and and has it really sink in deeper the more i if i beat myself up about something mm-hmm. so simply just shifting my focus and then all of a sudden gratitude is is a platform for new pieces to come in for for new information for new aha new awarenesses to come in so if i am hating anger to tie it back in here if i'm hating anger then i'm i am stuck on the anger Hmm. but if i can go wow, apply some spiritual law. My greatest weakness shall be my greatest strength. What is this turning into? Mm. If I can go into gratitude and awe for it, yes, I have that on deck, that that's what it's becoming. And I can actually very easily, easily, I love easy. Mm. I can, it just, it shows up instead of me trudging through and working through and trying to fix it and all that efforting. I mean, so... And the energy behind this is really, you know, God said, let there be light. Mm-hmm. And there was light. Right. Mm-hmm. Zero effort. He said it and it, like, and meant it. Right. Yep. And at the moment of conception. Yes. There's a, whenever, con, whenever conception occurs, there's a, the, 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 when the sperm and the egg unite, there's a spark of light. Mm-hmm. So each one of us is made of light. Yep. Mm. I mean, how cool was that? It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> pretty awesome. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. All pretty awesome. I remember when I first started working with you, Mark, I, and one of the questions, it was after, uh, it was probably like maybe day two or day three, you asked me, he's like, are you having fun? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was a great question because it's like, I thought I was having fun. I didn't realize how miserable my, <laughs> my life has been up until that point. And so with all of the tools that we're gaining with languaging and understanding and remembering how powerful our emotions are, I'm truly having fun. My life is fun. I'm having fun with, even in the hard times, I can, oh, I can have fun with this. You know, yeah. how many times we go through life and a lot of, a lot of people are going through life of, of uh, uh, striving. Yeah. That's basically what you were, you were saying. It was like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, you mean I could thrive even in the middle of, of, of whatever we're going through in life? And that's I, one of my biggest takeaways is, oh, I could have fun with all of this. I could choose to have fun and actually thrive through all of this. And it begins with languaging. Yeah. Yeah, languaging. But, you know, if you're in the middle of your shit, right, <laughs> what can you be grateful for even in the middle of that? You know, mm. Because that's when you're going to change your life. It's good if shit. You, if you, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, other, if you're a bum in my stuff and I'm beating myself up, feeling guilty about it, hating it, more shame and all that. It's like, wow, which I've done plenty of times, decades. And Got a couple of t-shirts. Yeah, a couple of t-shirts, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the tie dye. And <laughs> just going, okay, so I, what am I really grateful for right now? As soon as I do that, boop, over, every time. Yeah. Like if you hate it, you're gonna get more of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and if you choose to ha- have gratitude, if you choose to, uh, be you know, just grateful, then well, you're going to get more of it. Yeah, yeah. For, for every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. Physics, which you mm-hmm. resist, persists. Mm-hmm. Judge not, lest you be judged. Oh, my goodness. Physics, yeah. physics, in the, in the physics, same way, physics, with the same way. Physics, physics, physics. Yeah, spirituality and physics are the same thing. Yeah, it just hit me, just in, you know, just in my culture, you know, this African-American culture, what do we, or what do I say in our culture, or what do we say? Is that we must resist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as a collective so this applies as individuals and within you know our collective so yeah. the more my collective is saying oh we must resist we must resist and well we're going to keep getting more of that more and more <laughs> and, yeah more things to resist yeah more things to resist so that that when you said that it just kind of yep yeah i was like oh the light bulb went off yeah mm. and yeah. that pattern will stay until we go okay it's okay it's okay whatever's happened Whatever mm-hmm. happens, okay, now what do we choose to build with our life? Mm-hmm. Now what's new? Now what do we do? Ooh, create uh, reformation in ourselves first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the only mm-hmm. thing that's going to do it. No outside source of anything is going to change the, the pattern. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, none of it will. The mm-hmm. only thing is going to change the person on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and uh, I mean, again, th- 
the things that are simple can really be applied everywhere. So we've talked a little bit about health and, and you know, some maybe seemingly silly things like finding the keys or, or whatever it might be. But, you know, the truth is, is really, really simple. And, and so is this. And, I mean, I can apply this to, we talked about parenting some. Mm-hmm. We talked, I mean, it applies to finances. I mean, uh, how many yeah. times, me included until however many years ago it was, I don't have enough money for that. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. So mm-hmm. I didn't have enough money or if I had a sum of money come in or money come in, there was something that sucked it right back out. Mm-hmm. Not because I'm bad or because I did something wrong or I'm a terrible person or I suck or any of those other stories or I'm not good enough or know rattling off some conversations that show up for people but simply because I set my life down that path Mm -hmm. oh my gosh yeah guys it's this easy yeah I'm telling you it kind of stings but it's a good thing yeah it's a good oh I created this I mean Mm. a, a few when when I began hearing about what we're doing here I mean I I was in the place where I had um i had separated from my husband uh i to know let's see probably a year prior roundabout um and shortly after i separated i got laid off from my job they changed the the requirements about the the time frames and things like that and as a newly single mom i was there was going to be basically almost no time with my i mean maybe 30 minutes a day based on food and sleeping schedules and they were young Mm. younger at the time and um so all of these different things were playing out and i mean i I was at the point where i was like how am i going to pay the rent and put food on the table and pay the electric bill i mean i'm I'm talking like bare bones necessities how how am i going to do this Mm -hmm. i mean does that mean like I, I can skip food or, mm. you know, make sure they have something. I mean, if that, if that means grilled cheese sandwiches for, <laughs> you know, however long, you know, oh, I can, I'll find some way to have bread and cheese. And I, and I was doing, I was playing with oils and I was doing some, um, I do some different modalities with the oils, different techniques and, and things like that. And yet it was, it was a struggle and I love what I do, mm. but based on my conversations about money and my own value, Money and value, yeah. ha ha ha. Like it's it's so simple. Those those things that the words seem interchangeable, they're connected. Right. Listening mm-hmm. and hearing is another example. Okay. Mm. So my conversations both out loud and my internal conversations, that was having my money show up the way that it did. Plain and simple. I am it, this is going to sound so backwards, but I am so loved and valued and cherished that whatever I say shows up for me. Mm. Even if I'm picking, I don't have enough money. It's like, whew, okay. It's like, I imagine God going like, oh, that's an interesting choice. Have fun. Right. But, and in order for me to experience who I am and that the, the power that I was created in and with, mm. He allows it to play out. Right. Yeah. I, Man. Wow. It's, it's powerful. It's beautiful. I, I actually have a cool story about money. Um, and I, I believe I shared this with, with you guys one time. So I was talking with, there's a, a lady that I was coaching and so she's really big on manifest, uh, manifestation. You checking out my hair, Mark? Mm-hmm. You looking at my hair? You like it? You like it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness and so anyway i saw you peep my hair anyway, mm-hmm. anyways um i was coaching her and so she's all about manifestation and so she told me the story of how she asked her uh you know she would say god she's like god i i, I want to i want a water cash and so she was like all right in two days i want a water cash so she's in starbucks in the drive through and all of a sudden she sees a water cash at the door, like off to the side. And she's like, no, 
that's not my water cash god is that my water cash like, it can't be my water guy so she's like oh i'm gonna wait till that person you know walk this person walking out the door walks by if, if that person doesn't walk by and pick it up or walks by and pick it up then it's not mine well they didn't pick it up so she gets out of the car and she grabs the cash she's like oh this is my money and then she's counting it because she's really big into numbers and so she i choose to remember how much money i think it was like seven bucks or 11 bucks and so Hearing this conversation, I'm thinking, you know, these, you know, I knew it wasn't like the core of my, the purity of who I am. I just had these thoughts. I was like, you know, well, she's white, so she can manifest things really quick because she's used to getting what she wants, <laughs> you know, and that's why it happened. Like, cause you know, I have my, you know, I've had my issues with money. I was like, how is she just going to get money like that? And so I was like, I shut it down. Like, no, that, that's, that's other than the truth. The truth is I have the same capabilities use your language and create, create your money. Yeah. And so I said, you know what, God, I desire cash. It doesn't have to be a wad of cash, just, just, just some cash. You know, I wanted to show up and I left it alone. Didn't think about it anymore. I'm walking outside of the restaurant with my girlfriend holding her hand and we crossing this little patch of grass. And I look to my left and all of a sudden money, was floating in the wind. It was just like somebody got a got a blower and just blew money. And I'm screaming, money! I dropped it. I dropped it. I'm like, money! And I'm like, this little kid grabbing all this money. She's like, you didn't leave any money. I'm like, well, no, because it's my money. And I told her the story of what happened. And she's like, really? She's like, well, how did you do that? And you can tell she's taking mental notes. Oh. <laughs> how she, you know, how she could do the same thing. And the funny thing was that is that in that moment, it was, it was so real, but I find myself actually going through ebbs and flows of that. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I'm like, yeah, I got, I got my money. And the next thing you know, I was like, God, where's this money? And it reminds me that I required to be diligent, mm -hmm. you know, with my words. It's, you know, there's these layers and these filters you just got to keep, or I, I require just stick, yeah. sticking with. One of the things I work with some clients too is like instead of asking for money, mm -hmm. ask for the skill set that produces money. Mm. So if it's if you're, if you're a coach, then That's say, good. you know, I have the, the wisdom to really, to really excel with my clients. Mm. If you, if you're going to be a uh, work, you know, work for a company, what do I have that I can offer my company that's going to increase my value? Mm. You know, so ask for those skill sets. That's a big deal. That's important. Yep. And that, that way, what I found for me is that then that, that creates a level of self-generation rather than asking source for money again and again and right. again and again. Hmm. So. But that was, but it made it for a great story though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a different story. I yeah, love these stories. So, they, I yeah. mean, they're important. They're, that was important to you in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like take your steps. That was a, a powerful step. Mine yeah. playing with language, that was a powerful step for me. And it was important for me to see if I, does this work? Can I really mm -hmm. trust, you know, what, what's happening here? So mm -hmm. like, just play like make it a game and have mm. fun that's that's my fun. recommendation about language like make it a game mm -hmm. and and yeah. do that so yeah okay. so yeah when someone started this company you know there's a lot of different coaching companies and i said done seen a lot of different a lot of different things so I was, you know, how am i going to fit in what about you know what's different about what we're doing here you know, i kept going like man we need to do like a market analysis and how we're going to fit in and i said you know there's what's i asked the question, you know, what's unique and perfect for what we're doing here? What's unique and perfect for us? And I believe when we ask that question, the source that produces all the unique snowflakes answered my question. Mm. And what we have here is very different. Yes. So we're able to take that and, and package it into what we're doing here. Ooh. Ooh. Beautiful. 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 Boom. Boom. Chakalaka. -laka. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle, thank you so much for helping all of us to remember the power of our language um, and how it plays a huge role in our emotions. Um, is there, how can you wrap this up and is there a takeaway that you can leave with us? Yeah, I mean, I started to say it a few minutes ago. It's just allow yourself to play again mm. and find, like, as, as I become playful like a child, mm. Mm -hmm. all of a sudden it becomes fun and rather than being worried about doing it right or wrong and trying to pigeonhole myself into like a certain way just play and have fun and what happens then is all of a sudden my creativity kicks into a whole new way yeah. and I'll find things that are like 
Ah, so just that's my recommendation. Just play and have fun and feel. Mm. Yeah. Like be on purpose about playing and feeling. On purpose. Those two things yeah. like that? magic. Be a beginner. Yep. Yes. Ooh. Be a beginner. I mean, I'm done doing this for there's any concert for thirty years. I'm still a beginner. So keep the beginner at man, uh, attitude. Yeah, and that that uh, that keeps the doorway open for more to come in. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm if I'm running that I got it thing, or I you know I can do this. I mean, there's a there's a um, certain amount of trust and confidence that comes in because I'm aware that I'm God directed. That's different. Mm-hmm. But you know, like that beginner stage keeps that doorway open. Right. That's another good one. That's a good one. And is that your period? Period. Period. Boom. They two birds, one stone. I love it. Well, thank you guys for coming up play with us and have fun uh, my takeaway fun because that's honestly that's all I've, I've been hearing the whole time is having fun with with your language keeping it simple uh, sometimes I could get wordy even during this podcast I'm like ah, I'm thinking like what how do I do perfect question and the more uh, there's different stages where I just like just have fun enjoy the time enjoy the company be be present and it, it's just like whatever you mm-hmm. know and everything flowed. I noticed when I was doing that, everything flowed. Mm-hmm. Everything was great. So thank you for sharing this with us. I am so grateful for you guys for tuning in. Uh, remember to join our tribe, subscribe. See you again. Mm-hmm.